The barrier to launching a startup just dropped to nearly zero, and most people don't realize it yet. While others are still debating business plans and trying to raise money, you could have a live product with paying users in just a couple days. Today, I'm gonna show you my exact step-by-step -step process for launching a real software startup with AI. This will be live online, complete with user accounts and logins and payment functionality that can start generating revenue immediately. With this workflow, you can get your app up and into the world in a weekend. While I was running my marketing agency, we served software companies exclusively, including a couple that became unicorns. Now, with AI, I'm so grateful to not only be able to market software, but also to be able to build it myself. And I'm really excited to share this power with you today because this shift has been one of the most fulfilling parts of my journey. When I was starting to learn to cook, it took me forever to figure out that I needed to gather all of my ingredients first before I started cooking. I always thought I could grab them on the go, and that always led to a disaster in the kitchen, and that is exactly Exactly what I have been doing while I've been trying to code. So the first step here in this process is to gather everything that we're going to need and get it all installed and all of our accounts set up properly so that we can just make the rest very easy. And for this, I'm jumping directly into the cheat sheet. I create a cheat sheet like this for every single video that I make. There are over 135 of these all instantly available to anybody who joins my Patreon. There is a link in the description. So if that's interesting to you, please check check that out. And the first thing we got to do is create all of these accounts. If you don't have them already, this is the boring part, but just trust me, once you get these all set up, you will be able to fly through this stuff. You're going to need a GitHub account. You're going to need a Vercel account, a Supabase account, a Stripe account, and then we're going to need to install a few different things here in a second. If you're brand new to coding, you can think about GitHub as basically a Google Drive for your code. It's where we're going to store the code, and it's also going to help us keep track of the changes that we make as we go along. Vercel is a cutting edge tool for hosting our app. So like I said, we're going to be getting our app to the world. We're going to need to store it somewhere, that's going to be Vercel. In addition to Vercel, we're going to need Supabase to host our database. So Vercel hosts the front end, so the you know HTML and the web pages that you see. Supabase is going to host the database, so all of the different records. And if you're new to very new to databases, you can just think of them like giant spreadsheets where the different you know pages are attached and have different rules uh, throughout. Stripe, of course, is a powerful payment platform. This is how folks are going to be able to pay you for your app. I believe you should be able. To to get accounts with all of these for free and that should be plenty. I don't think you're going to need to pay too much. I know Supabase, once you get uh, more than two databases in there, you're going to have to start paying, but that should be plenty for you to experiment with. Once you've got all your accounts created, you're going to need to install a few extra things here by running just a couple things in the terminal. If you're brand new to the terminal, it looks like this. So find wherever your terminal is. If you're on a Mac or at Windows, they're in different places. If you're brand new to this, you just open your terminal and we copy and paste this code right into the terminal and run that. This one installs Homebrew, which will then allow you to install Git by running this command on a Mac. There's Windows instructions here. You can do a quick search for this stuff as well. And then this code will install Node. So we're gonna need those three things there. I know this is a very long one. You can go to brew.sh and you can grab that code here, but you wanna make sure all that stuff's installed. And then we're gonna need to install Windsurf if you don't have that already installed. And you're definitely gonna to wanna to integrate that with Gemini 2.5 Pro. I've had a lot of luck with the combination of Windsurf and Gemini 2.5 Pro. You can just do that by getting your um, Gemini API key from the Google AI Studio. Here's some instructions on how to do that. All right, and honestly, getting all that set up is probably one of the hardest parts of all of this. So hopefully you made it through that. It shouldn't be too bad. Once you've got Windsurf installed, it should look something like this. I have a whole video all about getting started with Windsurf that I will link to in the description that kind of goes through what all of these things are. And I'll try to explain a little bit about it as we go along. But what I've done next is created a brand new empty folder on my computer that's called SAS Starter Project V2. I've already done this once before. Uh, so you wanna create some sort of a new blank folder like that, somewhere that's easy to find on your computer. It doesn't need to be named that exact thing, but it needs to be an empty folder you can find. Then inside of Windsurf, we're gonna go up to File and we're gonna open that folder. And we're 
we're also gonna go to terminal and we're gonna open a new terminal window down here. So this is where all of our files will start showing up. This is where we're gonna be able to view our files right here in the middle. This is the terminal where we'll run some commands, but mainly we're gonna let Windsurf run all the commands. This is where we're going to be chatting with the AI. There's two different modes here. Write is for it to write code and chat is if you don't want it to write any code, you just wanna kinda talk to it about some things and not have it uh, do anything. So down here are all your previous chats. So like I was saying, GitHub is basically like a Google Drive for all types of code. And the beautiful thing about it is there are a lot of developers out there sharing their work on GitHub. And this is a project that I came across recently that was truly a game changer for me because this has the, everything you need for a SaaS product all set up and ready to go. Here's what that looks like. So this is exactly what we are going to be deploying. And then once we've got it all set up and connected to our database and live on a server, we can then tweak it and start to build our app out from there. Here's the link to that repository, that code base. And I'm just gonna grab this whole prompt and copy and paste this right into Windows windsurf and we're off to the races just want to double check that it's got the right folder here and that everything looks good click accept you can see all those files immediately got uh, generated here and there's one file in here that's very important this is where we need to go next this is the EMV file it says dot env dot example and this is where all your little secrets, these connections to these different tools that we set up is going to live. So this is what we need to fill out next by going first to get our Postgres URL inside of Superbase. So you've created a Superbase account already. Hopefully now you're gonna to need to pop into Superbase and create a new project. Go ahead and give that a name. I'm just using the name of the folder that I created and a password here. Make sure to keep that password handy. You're gonna need it in a second. Once that spins up, you're gonna pop up here to this connect button. Click on that and you're gonna to go to this session pooler here and you're gonna copy this entire link right back here into your windsurf, into your .env.example file. I'm gonna put that right here and you will notice there is a place right here in these square brackets for your password. So you gotta drop your password right in there. And now we've basically gotta do the same thing here, filling out the Stripe secret key, the Stripe webhook, and the base URL and authority secret. So here's your Stripe dashboard down here on developers, go up to API keys, create a secret key here, building your own integration, gotta name your secret key, and there it is. Don't worry, I'm gonna delete this immediately after filming the video. Drop that right in here. Make sure not to share your secret keys with anybody other than me. We're gonna leave this Stripe webhook secret base URL and authority secret alone for now. But one thing we wanna do now is change the name of this file from .env.example to just .env. So we'll just right click on that, rename it, and just delete this example part. So that is now truly our EMV or environment variable file. And that's just a fancy way of saying this is where all my passwords are. And now that we've got this basic foundation in place, we're gonna move forward with setting up the database. One handy tool that you may wanna set up is this Supabase MCP inside of Windsurf. This can really help Windsurf speak directly to your database when you're setting everything up. So it's fairly simple. I know a lot of this looks complicated, but it's all just a lot of copy and paste when you get right down to it. There are all sorts of guides online that can help you if you get stuck with any of this. The basics are you wanna run this command inside of your terminal, just like I showed you before. You know, here's your terminal. You just copy and paste that right in there. Then inside of Windsurf, you can click this little hammer and you can click this configure file and it should open up a uh, window here where you can just copy and paste information like I have here, filling out your different credentials in here. I have that all in the cheat sheet and it has instructions of what you need to replace, you know, each little snippet with, you know, your project reference number and so forth. But truth be told, you can walk yourself through this. There are a lot of things online that can help with this. Perplexity is very helpful when it comes to setting this type of thing up as well. Now we're just gonna drop this prompt into Windsurf. 
It just says that I'd like to set up and seed my Postgres database for this project in Supabase. I have the .env file set up and everything should be ready to go. And it is looking through everything now. It's saying we need to install this. And now it's walking us through some other stuff we need to install. And you don't really need to worry about a lot of this stuff. This one got me for a minute. It's asking if it's okay to proceed. So we need to click this relocate and it just pulls that into our little terminal here and we click Y and now we're good to go. It's saying we need some extra stuff for Stripe. And now we're going to seed this, so things are looking good. All right, and after some back and forth, we now have the database all set up and running. So if you've seen my other videos, I like to work from the back end to the front end. So starting with the database, working towards the front end. This next prompt is very simple. I'm just saying I'd like to run this and test it on my local machine. Dropping that into Windsurf, and it's spinning it up. And there it is, awesome. So this is really cool. This is just on our local machine. So we're gonna be pushing it up to the internet here shortly. Uh, but it makes sense to just click around and make sure that everything's looking good. You can see all the cool stuff that this free code base comes with. Um, you know, these are all the things you don't have to build here. So really, really cool. This is logging in and now we can log out. So the next step is we're gonna push this up to first GitHub so we can store all of our code there and then we're gonna host it on Vercel. Here's the prompt we're gonna use for that. And you can see now we're getting through some of the coding stuff so we can actually now just start to talk with it and improve it as we go along. So things get a lot easier once we've jumped through that hoop. Copying this right here into Windsurf. Gonna run a Git status here to figure out that we don't have any um, Git, GitHub page set up for this yet. And it looks like it wants to restore that envelope file. Just follow along with it, let it do its thing. And here it should start walking you through setting up a new repository on GitHub. You just click new, give it a name. You can give it a description if you want. You can make it public or private. Click create. I'm gonna grab this link and give this to Windsurf. Let Windsurf do its beautiful thing here. When in doubt, just follow along with whatever Windsurf recommends. Keep on hitting accept. Excellent, the project has been successfully pushed to your new GitHub repository with a clean history. And now we need to log into Vercel and set up a new project. It's helpful if you log into Vercel using your GitHub account, the same way you would log in uh, with a Google um, account to other websites. Inside of Vercel, you should see something like this, add new project. And you see our project right here, since this is connected to our GitHub account. So we're gonna import that and now we've got add our environment variables. So those are those same secrets from that .env file we're gonna need to put in here. So here's how you do that. The Postgres URL, copy that right here and add more. But a cool trick I just learned is you can copy and paste all of this, copy, and just right in here, add more in that first line, just click paste and they all go in, which is pretty cool. Another cool thing is that you can use Windsurf to help you create an auth secret with this prompt. I've run that right here. It's generated that code. So I'm going to copy that auth secret right back here into Vercel. And I'm going to leave that base URL blank and this webhook blank. We'll need to come back and do those once we get our base URL from Vercel here in a second. Clicking deploy. And this can take a couple minutes to build everything and get it online. Awesome, and it has now been deployed. All right, and we can see it. This is a public facing URL that you can share with anybody in the world and they'll be able to see it. So now we need to copy that URL back in here. We're gonna to need to add this environment variable. Remember, we didn't have this one. This is our base URL, gonna save that. And now that we have that, we can set up our Stripe webhook so we can get our payments Get that money. Here we are back in the Stripe dashboard, developers, webhooks. We're gonna add this endpoint right here. So for this, it's real easy now that we have our domain. Just popping back into the cheat sheet here and grabbing this example here, copying that right into Stripe, but we gotta switch out this domain with our actual domain. Select all events, add events, add endpoint, and there you go. We have that all set up. Gotta reveal that signing secret. We're gonna copy that, and that's what goes right here into our webhook secret. Gonna save all these, and then we've gotta redeploy it. 
It's gonna build again, it's gonna take a second. At this point, I'd just like to pause and take a second and let you know I got your back. If any of this is confusing, just take it slow, go one step at a time. If something just feels totally off or you get into what I call the circle of doom, where windsurf just keeps spitting errors at you, just stop, take a deep breath, take a walk. Sometimes it helps to just start all over again from square one and just reboot everything. I've had a lot of problems go away that way. But look, once you get through this hoop and you get something deployed then you can easily start to build on top of it you're really in that top one percent or maybe the top oh one percent of AI users out there who can actually deploy a real app using AI and that's the blazing zebra way blazing we got to move fast we got to keep charging forward and zebra we got to embrace our own uniqueness and follow you know our own unique strengths to get ahead in this new ai world i'm here for you we're in this together so let's get back to it awesome and now that that's redeployed you can start doing some really cool things here's where the fun really begins i'm just going to tell windsurf now i'd like to update all of the copy on the home page to make this an app about a crm for zebras Please turn all the orange accent colors to a muted purple and then begin to recommend other modifications we can make to build out this app. Dropping that right into Windsurf. And look at that, it has updated everything. I just kept pressing accept, it pushed it to GitHub. So we have now a new version saved on GitHub and then it pushed it straight to deployment. We can see it here on uh, the web. Anybody can check it out. The cheat sheet is absolutely packed with everything that we went over today. So you can just copy and paste this stuff directly into Windsurf. This cheat sheet especially I think is helpful if you get lost. You know, you don't wanna be forwarding and reversing this video back and forth. You just wanna be able to follow along that with that guide. And Think about it, if you start doing this on behalf of clients, this is the type of thing that would cost tens and tens of thousands of dollars. Believe me, building out these apps is super, super, super lucrative. I've got another video all about creating the features of these apps, so now that we have something up and running, you're gonna wanna start creating you know, all of the different things. If it's a CRM, the different you know, customer views, the dashboard, the ways to interact with it, that video is right here. I'll see you over there. Make the dreams come true.